reading a poem by Shel Silverstein called Invitation. If, if you, you are, are a dreamer, dreamer come in. in. If you, you are, are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a, a hoper, a prayer, a magic beam buyer. If you're, if you're a pretender, come, come sit by, by my fire. fire. For we, we have, have some black flex golden tales, tales to spin. Come in, come in. in. Hi. The first Sunday in May brings us to a new focus for this month. Our theme for this month is resilience. It's the right topic for the right time. We're going to have to navigate a lot of things going forward, including the questions of whether or not it's the right idea for us to emerge from relative isolation into society. We've all got to work this out and figure out how to be. And most of the time we'll still be home, still be isolated a little bit at least, and we'll still be concerned about doing our best to flatten the curve and to fight infection in our own homes and for the people we are in contact with. That's not an easy thing. And so we're gonna need to put on our backpacks of resilience and travel through time, through this month, and see where we wind up at the end. What will we be ready for at the end of May that we're not yet ready for, or we don't know we're ready for? Welcome to May, to a time of resilience. Get your backpack. Will you join me now in a time of prayer? God of many mysteries beyond our naming, spirit of love, life, and compassion, we welcome the presence of the Holy in this place as we are together today for a time of prayer. Guide us now as we are linked heart to heart in the stillness and the calmness of this moment. We know that for many of us, these days feel too hard as we in this faith community are still in the grips of this devastating global pandemic. This coronavirus has exacted a physical an economic and emotional toll on many in the beloved community, impacting especially our siblings from the oppressed and marginalized community the hardest. There is fear, anxiety, and feelings of isolation that permeate through the land. But in the midst of this pandemic, in the middle of our fears, our worries, our struggles, and our pain. We can cling to our beliefs that there is still hope. We hope that our days would be better, our future would be brighter, and we pray that we will find peace and comfort beyond all understanding. 
We pray for those things that bring joy to our hearts, that uplift our spirits, that enlightens our minds, the things that bring awe and wonder to our world, the things that we trust, believe in, and will sacrifice for, the gifts of grace that we need not to define to appreciate them, to rejoice in them, and be thankful in them. So we are grateful for all of the blessings of our lives, always holding in our hearts gratitude for those things that bless us with their presence. And now we ask that the light of hope shine through our times of darkness and brings us encouragement as we face the many challenges of our lives. Open our hearts for the journey, our eyes for the light, our spirit for the peace, which the Holy Spirit would bring. Bless each one of us here this morning, refresh our spirits and transform our whole being until we reflect the spirit of love and compassion through and through. We pray in the names of all of those known and unknown, present and absent, remembered and forgotten. We pray in the names of all of the helpers of humanity. Amen. Namaste. Ashe. Blessed be. Our reading today is from the poet E.E. E. Cummings. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping, greenly spirit of trees and a blue, true dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I, who have died, am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life and love and wings, of the gay, great, happening, illimitably Earth. How should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing, any lifted from the know of all nothing, human, merely being, doubt unimaginable you now the ears of my ears are awake and now the eyes of my eyes 
or opened. We all have resilience. We do. We forget sometimes that we have it, or we prefer to act as though we didn't have it, but we do, we have resilience. And we can remind ourselves and remind one another and teach our children about resilience when we remind ourselves that we have it. So let me talk about resilience and how we together can be reminded of our common strength and by that be lifted up and become stronger still together and as individuals. Back when we traveled, I would travel too, often on airplanes and through busy airports. Sometimes my connections were really close. Sometimes they were not close at all. But I always liked to travel with a backpack. A backpack is much easier than trying to carry something in your hand. Your arms get tired, you have to keep shifting back and forth, but not with a backpack. You, your torso carries the weight and you can do it really well. So you just throw this little puppy on and off you go. Except that sometimes, especially when we have two straps on, we forget when we're wearing a backpack that we can clunk into other people. We turn around as if we were only this wide when in fact we're this wide. And as a result, Sometimes, especially when you see people trying to put things in the overhead compartments and everything else, they'll turn around and clunk the person in line next to them. So one of the things we have to remind ourselves is that resilience is like a backpack. We have it and we have to remember we've got it. And we have to open it up to see what's in it. We have a natural tendency to resilience we are people who can sometimes forget, we sometimes freeze up because we imagine the problem that we're facing is really bad, really, really bad. We learned to do this in past days when we felt overwhelmed by all that was going on. And so we freeze, we stop. It's almost like we wanna close our eyes and not see the problem. Nothing, nothing gets better this way. A second way that we deal with problems that we have is that we also have a tendency to flee. We imagine, I gotta get out of here, it's better over there. This is a tendency we developed as human beings over a long, 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 long period of time in evolution because it's a good idea when you see a saber-toothed tiger to maybe think about a plan to evacuate the area. But I haven't seen any saber-toothed tigers around here. Most of our problems today are a different kind of problem, not often as life and death as things may be lately. But still, resilience teaches us that fleeing, going someplace else, seeking a geographic cure, whatever, it is that we're trying to do in fleeing never addresses the problem and even if you can escape the problem temporarily it tends to return over and over again so one of the things that we need to do is to start thinking about what we have in our backpack and the first tool we have is that we should go off and look yeah we should look what I mean by that is that in a bad situation, it's always good to notice a little more deeply than you would on the surface. Sometimes when we first look, we get fearful and, and we go to freeze or flee. But the first thing we should do is exhale and start to look at the problem. Hmm, have I seen this problem before? Does it look familiar to me? Hmm, am I doing something that might be bringing this on? Have I forgotten a lesson I learned? Have I been going too fast? That's my problem, I go too fast. So one of the things that we need to do is to look at the problem, look at it hard, see what we can see. This is why 
most religious scriptures have stories about people climbing up a mountain. They climb up because supposedly they're closer to God and more inspiration is available to them. Maybe they'll hear the voice of God. That's one way of seeing it. Another thing is that because they have to climb the mountain, they go through a ritual like spiritual practices that demand energy of us, that demand attention. But when we put them step by step by step together and we continue doing them, they start to open up perspectives we didn't know we had. And so pilgrims climbing a mountain in scriptures is very common because they learn a lot of lessons in the climbing. But then there is the arriving. And as any tourist who ever went up a mountain knows, the view feels better just because you made the climb, but it gives you the big picture. And the big picture is really important when you're looking. You can start to see that the small thing you were worried about sits amidst a whole lot of other things. That in fact, it isn't as big a problem. We actually say this when we say, oh, she's making a mountain out of a molehill. So mountain climbing in scripture teaches us to go up and get perspective. That we really need perspective about our problems and not to panic the first thing, but to look so that we can begin to understand. All right, so the second thing is that we need to remember. We have a tendency to forget, a big tendency to forget, that we got peeps. <laughs> we imagine and we, we think sometimes it's our fault that we're facing this problem or it's our problem or it's all about us. That's part of the fallacy of individualism that's so overdone for so many of us where we think we're responsible for everything and everyone or where we especially think that everything that happens to us must have been brought on by us. No, well, it's just life. Life has problems. You didn't bring on a pandemic. You're not that powerful. So when we remember that we have resources, we begin to see what we've looked at and start to match our resources to help us. This includes our family. If not our immediate family, maybe beyond, a cousin, an aunt, someone who is helpful in their perspective. Maybe somebody who knows the family stories and the family learnings over time. Our friends. Our friends care about us. Our real friends love us. And they're interested in our welfare. Our teachers, our mentors, our advocates. People who've been there for us and who saw the value in us and will continue to see it as they reflect with us on the problem you're facing. And then there are all manner of professional folks and institutions. So we can call on these folks. We can put together a really good team to help us face our problems. Much better than freezing or fleeing, remembering. So we wanna look, we wanna remember, and we also want to take time to understand that we've been taught that the most important action in our backpack is for us to act, to act. That's the third thing. Look, remember, act. I know it can seem daunting. The problem can seem big, even with our friends, even with our collaborators, even with our team. But here's the truth. One small step, a small, small step followed by another small, small step, starts to create a chain of motion that starts to lead us on to where we wanna go. That's why in AA, um, they teach about one day at a time. Yeah, because it's easier when we remember that action is required instead of another drink, another slice of cake, instead of another four hours spent on a game, instead of not talking to our spouse, instead of throwing ourselves into our work so much 
but there's no time to notice our problems. We as human beings have been taught by our humanist tradition that in fact nothing really valuable can happen unless we start to come on and act one foot, one foot, one foot forward. In action, we can do amazing things. We can really cause a whole lot more to unfold, increase our understanding, be able to negotiate and navigate the challenges ahead. And we do that because we just keep reaching into our backpack. It's with us and we can't forget it's there. So let's remind one another that first of all, we have to claim that we are resilient. We've got a backpack. Number two, we have to look, remember, and then number three, act. We have to teach this to one another, remind one another, remind ourselves, give ourselves the space and the spiritual practice to remember. And then by so doing, we'll start to think of ourselves as resilient, as always having that backpack at the ready. I hope you and I will come through these difficult times thinking of ourselves as more resilient than we knew when we started. Look at us. We're suppressing the curve. We're treating one another decently. We've done remarkable things by staying home and it has a remarkable effect on Mother Earth. How can we do more of that? We're also learning that there are good things we love to do, that we enjoy family. And that even if our family is not an easy place right now, we have the ability to make it a better place going forward. So remember, you've got a backpack of resilience. It's your nature to be a resilient person. Now, Let's remember to think of ourselves just that way. Be resilient. May it be so.
Good morning. This morning's Share the Plate, our collection, goes to the First Unitarian Universalist Disaster Relief Fund. When we began this collection last month, we did not anticipate that the need would be so great so soon. We are collecting in order to be able to help our members and members of our larger community. Please be generous. The ways to give are on your screen. Thank you. Our service comes to an end now, and we hope you found something that is a bit of inspiration, something worth remembering, perhaps something worth sharing with a friend. These are days where we all need resilience. And if you would like to have the packet of materials that we have on resilience, we'd love to share it with you, no matter how far or how near you are. Or if you'd like to speak to one of our ministers or find out more how you can get involved in the congregation, even if you're at some distance, which a lot of you, it turns out, are. We'd love to connect you. So write us at membership at richmonduu.org. Membership at richmonduu.org. And we'll send you what we have and find out how we can be of more help. And our benediction today is this. You bloom too. You are strong, you are resilient. You come back from difficult things. You forget sometimes how much you know and how many peeps you have who can help you. Don't forget, put on that backpack, wear it. Teach your children about resilience, about all the things that make up a resilient heart and mind and then meet the dead. Because we'll all need to be resilient right now. And we will be. Blessed be everyone. May it be a wonderful week. Oh.